Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's recap is for Wednesday, <clears throat> got an allergy day today, Wednesday, July the 20th, 2022. Uh, today's uh, General Hospital was your typical Wednesday. It was okay, not too, too much going on, but it kind of moved along. <clears throat> it was the opening night open mic night uh, on the Haunted Star, which they haven't shown in ever, uh, years, but uh, Chase was gonna sing. And of course, Maxi, I mean, Mac was the MC of all people. He says, oh, Felicia couldn't make it. So he was filling in. It's like, Felicia, why would she be the MC? But okay, right? Um, Chase was nervous. He really didn't want to do it. So he was just staying in the gym with Finn and <clears throat> Finn fi finally got it out of him. Why was he lingering there hitting the punching bag? So um, in the end, you know, I'm skipping through the whole show because they go in and out of scenes, right? Chase does show up and he gets on stage and, and Link kind of goats Brooklyn and Chase, you know, oh, uh, detective chase oh or are you not a detective anymore just you know kind of goating him <clears throat> and he finds out that chase is going to be singing and of course he starts off a little nervous but then he jumps right into the song and does an excellent job the crowd was loving him um Wimmo and michael were there uh brooklyn talked reminded them and talked them into coming when she saw them at the quarter main house um, but the crowd liked it and Link was looking at everybody responding to Chase and he was like, hmm, this guy has a little something to him, which is exactly what Brooklyn knew he would do. Um, so of course, at the end, Brooklyn says, okay, now I'm going to pretend to go backstage to give Link a chance to approach Ch Chase, which is exactly what he did, asking him, did he ever want a career in music? Now, <clears throat> think about this logically. Link was blackmailing Brooklyn. Chase had to deck him for putting his little hands or, or talking bad about her. Would he be the one you would want to manage your music career? We know he's a sleaze with the contract. You can't trust him. So, hmm, yeah, that's exactly who I would want to sign with, right? That's a horrible plan, and I don't even know why Chase is going along with it, because in the, oh, anyway, I don't even want to talk about that, but <clears throat> today or, or tonight was going to be the evening of Britt and Cody's first date, and she shows up to the stables a little early. Um, he talks her into petting the horse. She didn't like horses, and he's finally like, you know, she needed to live a little, you know, she was just acting like she was dying or something. And that kind of struck a nerve with her. So she went ahead and I guess petted the horse, you know, got close to the horse, even though she didn't want to. So then they were having some wine and a little snack out there on the patio area outside the stables. And <clears throat> he was just talking and it, it's true. He was saying all the perfect things. Oh, my mother, would be upset if I, you know, expected my wife to have me my slippers or whatever. And then he kind of talked about, yeah, he wanted a couple kids and all of that. And soon as he said that, <clears throat> Britt jumped up from the table and said, I don't know why Zelda would have thought you and I were a match. And then she turned into her usual Brit. She started insulting him and this, that, and the other. And he's like, because she said something about you and your doting wife and your dozen kids. She could have a dozen kids. And he was like, I don't even want kids. And so she looked at him and she said, why did you say you did? Oh, you were just saying <clears throat> these things. You were saying everything you thought I wanted to hear. Everything you thought I wanted to hear. So they left things, you know, kind of so-so-ish. Um, they're definitely going to have another date because Britt is intrigued by him. She really, she really honestly is. Now, we had scenes with Sasha and 
uh, Nina. Nina came to visit Sasha. Sasha's supposed to be discharged from the hospital today. She is going to go home. Brando's very nervous about it, but he's going along with her. And Sasha is playing the part of, I'm fine. I just need to get home. And she's telling him, oh, I can't wait to get in your arms and all of that. And he's, he's like, I thought you'd be mad at me. And she's like, no, no, you did exactly what I, what I needed. And she's just playing him because she's so good at masking her feelings. So he's going to check on the discharge papers. And Nina comes in with a, a bag, a change of clothes for her. And Sasha's so happy. And Nina was kind of like saying, you know, look, Shady Brook did wonders for me. You know, it's, it really helped me get myself together. And Sasha's like, no, I'm, I'm going to do outpatient therapy, what she named a doctor. And um, I didn't think she said Colin. She, she said another doctor because I would have thought, oh, Kevin is going to treat her. So she said another doctor, doctor's name. And <clears throat> Nina just supported whatever she wanted, whatever Sasha really wants to do with Sasha's life. But she's saying, you know, you can talk to me, you know, about anything. And but I am definitely not. A, a trained professional like you need trained help but I'm here for you and Sasha was saying how she really felt yes she knew the pills were making her hallucinate but she felt Liam in her arms she felt the weight of him she could just uh, see him and feel him and he had a beautiful smile and in my mind I'm thinking okay Liam was a tiny 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 infant so she really would have to have imagined what he would have looked like at that age because he would have looked like a completely different baby. We know babies, brand brand newborns, especially premature ones, by the time they're four months old, they look completely different. All cheeks fat plumping out, you know, their features are, are more defined. But um, she was just saying, sometimes I wish I were were with him or, 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 you know, could just be holding him and, and loving him. And part of me was like, she's either going to overdose on the pills because she's not, and still, even to this day, she told Nina, I am not addicted to pills. Yes, she is. Soon as she, she's going to try to find another, another uh, dealer and guess what? She's going to have to, even though her original dealer is still around. I don't know how that photographer became the one that's supplying her with the pills. It was always that girl that works at de deception, you know, goodness. We, I remember that. So she's either going to do that overdose, which will free Brando up to work for Sunny full time, or she's going to end up somehow, you know how soap operas are. She's going to kidnap Willow's baby once Willow has it and just go into this fantasy world that it's her baby. But they kind of have Sasha spiraling out of control rather fast that a pregnancy, because Willow's brand new with her pregnancy. I don't know that she's gonna be around for that long, even though they speed up pregnancies and soap operas, but they would have to speed this Willow's pregnancy up real soon in order for Sasha to last uh, for that long period of time. Um, but it's just interesting to see she's not okay. And, and we're just going to see other signs of her spiraling, spiraling um, out of control. But one thing I, I definitely like is the relationship. Nina forgave her a long time ago for the deception and to Valentine too, uh, of her pretending to be her daughter. But for all intense purposes, Nina and Sasha do have a mother-daughter relationship. Sasha has no one. Nina, so she thinks, has no one. And Nina's very protective of Sasha. So, I mean, that relationship, I'm so happy to see that, that it is still very, very strong. And Nina, Nina is, she loves Sasha and Sasha loves Nina as well. So I'm happy they were able to get back to that. You know, that was nice. I, I, it really was. Um, 
so also at the open mic at the Haunted Star, Epiphany sang again, um, cause she, she sings, that actress sings in real life. She's an excellent singer. And another person who's an excellent singer that you may not know about is um, Diane, the, the actress that plays Diane. Oh, she can sing as well. She's a phenomenal singer. But what I liked that happened is Sonny told Dex, Sonny told Dex to, he asked Brenda, what was the name of that sleazeball attorney that gave uh, Sasha those pills? And he, um, um, what's his name? Sonny's, Sonny's cousin, Brando, goodness, sometimes I, the names just leave me. Brando said what his name was to Sonny. And Sonny told Dex, it's Fenty. Sonny told Dex, you go find this Fenty. And Dex was like, okay. And look boss, you want me to handle him? And he's like, no, I want you to find him. And then you report back to me. And he's kind of almost like, look at me, look at me. Don't you do anything, <laughs> you know, you get back to me. This is a test for you. I'm testing you to see if you could follow instructions. And he's like, oh, okay, boss. Oh, okay. Because he's like, look, good is done. I'll, I'll take care of him and tell you where the body's buried. <laughs> but unfortunately, we know he works for Mike, Michael. So we kind of think he'll let Michael know where the body is buried, unfortunately. Um, but Michael... I don't, I don't think Michael would definitely go that far. I really don't. But Brando heard Sonny talking to Dex and he's like, you know, cause, oh no, Sonny said, I'm going to take care of him for you. I'll make sure he never sells drugs to Sasha or anyone else ever again. So we don't know what that means. You know, we'll see. Cause Sonny really hasn't had anybody killed in years. I think realistically, you know, um, so Dex was like, I, I want in on that. And Sonny was like, okay. And then he realized once Sonny sent Dex away that he was going to do it right now, find the guy right now. And so Brando said, you know, I, I really have to be here for Sasha. I have to take her out the hospital. Uncle, Son you know, I mean, Sonny, just let me know that you handle it, handle it for me. And he goes, oh, no, no. Oh, it's good as handled. Yep, it's good as handled. So Sonny goes to GH, um, and that was, which is where he's talking to Brando. And while he's talking to Brando, um, the guy finds Fenty real fast because Sonny leaves. Brando goes in to, so to get Sasha to take her home, and Sonny gets a phone call, and he's like, boss, I found him. And Sonny is like, you know, I'll be right there. Yeah, I'm on my way. And I was like, ooh, ooh the Godfather, yikes, the mob boss is back. Let's see what happens with that. You know, I, I, people forget Sonny is a gangster, <laughs> you know? So let's see what happens here. How far is he gonna go? Is he gonna just have the guy all roughed up and scared? Or is he going to eliminate him? Now, I could tell you if it was Miss Wu, Selena would have him just X'd out, period. You know, Selena don't play. Um, so anyway, that was really good. And I, I like to see Sonny in action. I would like Nina to get kind of a glimpse of, I got to go handle some business. Okay, well, what are you talking, where? Oh, or look, I'm going to make sure that pusher never sells drugs to anybody else. Well, well what does that mean, Sonny? What are you gonna do, Sonny? Uh, uh, and get all in the business, okay? Carly knew when not to ask questions, right? She was a mob boss's wife for way too long. So she knew what when she could ask questions and when she shouldn't and when she doesn't want to. So that was the recap for today, Wednesday, July the 20th on General Hospital. We do have a few comments in Comment Corner. 
Um, oh, and you know, one thing I forgot to mention, I got to start remembering to mention this at the beginning. Now at the, the bottom here, I'm trying to get my hand to show on my camera. At the bottom, the bottom, probably your bottom right, uh, you're going to see a little subscribe square. Please click the subscribe square. It's a clickable link. You can click it. You can subscribe right away. But let's go to, to a comment corner. Uh, let's see. We've got Annette. Um, she's saying that um, Carly is is kind of going to be in is going to be in a world of hurting though. Um, fallout when Michael finds out she knew the truth about Willow. And look, just like Michael was cutting Sonny out, Michael looks sideways at Carly. Oh, he will stop talking to his mother for a hot minute. You know, and Carly doesn't want to be left out in the cold right now when she's going to be a grandmother again. But yeah, there's going to definitely, definitely, I agree with you, Annette, there's going to be some fallout once the truth, Carly has to tell the truth. And then Sandy, Sandy gave a couple of comments. She said on uh, yesterday's scenes, Tuesday, she really liked the scenes between Spencer and Esme. And she said that she was just so happy with Spencer uh, yesterday, the way he ripped Esme a new one. And he said he read her up and down and inside and out. <laughs> and he should have recorded her. But she really didn't say anything incriminating. He was doing the one lane off the timeline. She did not incriminate herself even to him. Um, and then she says that Josh, Rory, and Jordan, they did a good job on the stand. And Diane is the queen in court. I agree with you, Sandy, on that. And then she says Spencer needs to testify. But Spencer really has nothing. Well, yes, he was at the cabin that night. So I am surprised he is not a witness as well because he was at the cabin. But then look, that would open up the door for Esme to be a witness and lie she would right there on the stand. And then this chemo beauty, she gave me another update um, that the actor who plays Cam, he's no longer under contract you know, with General Hospital because of school. He only is uh, reoccurring now and they only have him. He's only there when they need, you know, to film some scenes around him. So he just makes appearances on General Hospital. Uh, but she felt that the, the trial kind of started off slow. Um, but then it did heat up, but she felt it started off slow. And she said, Spencer did a great job with Esme. She says, I don't think Esme took the bait. I don't think so either, this chemo beauty. Um, she's given an assignment by Ryan, which is true. So Esme's not going to deviate from that ass assignment. She's still trying to get back into, um, um, let's see, it's not Shady Brook because that's the insane, that's the mental hospital. Um, sh let's see, Shady Brook and Spring Ridge. She's trying to get back into Spring Ridge where Ryan is so that she can help free him. Um, so yeah, she's, she's not going to take the Spencer's bait. But once Ryan is free and those two, Esme and Ryan, are out to do their dirt, Spencer better be in trouble because Esme is going to break up Ava uh, and Nicholas by telling them she's pregnant. Okay, that's her whole goal. And then she's going to probably try to, uh, with Ryan, get some revenge out Ava Nicholas and Spencer will be in there some kind of way because Spencer is now going to be one of her targets that she has. So I agree with you there, uh, this chemo beauty. Esme's got a lot she's about to do to everyone um, that's come across her path, her path, uh, her and Ryan, goodness gracious. Uh, so that today is the Update for General Hospital Wednesday, July the 20th. I will be back tomorrow on Thursday with another update.